Mr. Secretary, I'm going to start the questions this morning uh, with accountability, a theme that this panel has talked about repeatedly, and uh, clarity in government policy. So here's the question I want to start with. The auto industry has received taxpayer money, but it has been linked to changes in management, uh, changes in business practices, breaking labor contracts, and causing bondholders to take losses um, at a minimum. The banks have received 10 times more money than the auto industry, and yet they seem to be receiving a very different treatment. So the question I have is why the different treatment and in particular, do you think that the banks are better managed than the auto companies were? Uh, very important question and a reasonable question. So let me say a few things in response. First of all, everything we're trying to do to get the financial system working again is important to the success of the restructuring, rehabilitation of our automobile industry. It's true for the economy as a whole and the industry in the United States. Without a financial system that is working to provide credit, you're going to see much more damage, much more challenge, much greater headwinds uh, for businesses across the country. Uh, the approach we've taken, sorry, second, second basic point. If you step back, you know, we're five quarters into this recession, and we're at least that long into this very substantial dramatic adjustment we saw following this unprecedented financial boom. So there has been very, very dramatic restructuring already across the financial system. If you just look at the largest institution in the world that existed two years ago and look at how many exist today, there's been very dramatic restructuring. Third point, third point, um, as, as your colleagues said at the beginning, uh, in assessing what was necessary going forward to solve the problems we inherited, we made it clear that where we're going to provide capital in the future, we want to target it to where it's necessary, we want to do it on a differentiated basis, we don't want to do it with conditions, not unconditionally, but with conditions not just to help protect the taxpayer, to, but try to help ensure that the system emerges stronger, not weaker. That's a very important principle. And we've said, the President said publicly, that where we provide exceptional assistance, because that's necessary to make sure there's capital in the system, it will come with conditions to make sure there's restructuring accountability to make sure these firms emerge stronger uh, in the future. Now, So let me just make sure I'm understanding you to this point. I just want to be sure, sure that I'm following here. Are you saying that the difference in treatment between how the banks were treated and how the auto industry has been treated is effectively one of timing, and that going forward, the banks will be treated with the same kind of accountability at a minimum that's been demanded from the auto industry? Well, uh, you know, I'm trying to be candid. You know, these are, they are, they are different challenges. They require different solutions, but there's less difference than, you, than your question suggests. Just to tell you a couple of examples. If you look at where the government acted, had to act early and substantial force, in some of the largest and weakest part of the system, in that context, both in the context of Fannie and Freddie and the context of AIG, we were very clear that the conditions in that context came with changes in board and management for exactly the reasons you said. Now, there's also, there's been... I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I'm following. You're saying that there have been changes in management? Where the government... The financial actually, institutions absolutely. that have received TARP funds? Well, as, as I said, in the context of... Uh, the interventions taken in Fannie and Freddie and AIG, just to cite three I, examples. I'm asking about the financial institutions. Well, those, those are financial institutions. I'm asking about the uh, banks. But the principle is important in this case. And I, as I said, the President said this publicly, I've said it publicly. Going forward, where institutions need exceptional levels of assistance, we will make sure that assistance comes with conditions that provide for the necessary degree of accountability, help ensure these firms emerge stronger rather than weaker. And that's an important principle. We're committed to do it. Now, what, what is necessary in each specific case is judgment we're going to have to make. But I, I, I think that's a very important principle. It's at the core of our program. Good. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I have a second question on accountability. In the last few weeks, banks have been announcing a few banks uh, that they have quarterly profits. Um, but there's also been a renewed acceleration of home mortgage foreclosures and new examples of raising fees on customers who have met all of their contract terms and raising interest rates, even for consumers paying on time. So I want to ask, do you think that banks receiving TARP funds should be engaging in these practices? Uh, I just want to underscore our commitment, the administration's commitment to doing everything we can to help mitigate the damage homeowners are facing across the country. Thanks. Now, if you look at the programs we put in place, they are very comprehensive very aggressive, very dramatic programs to make sure that people are getting relief where they need it. And just to point out how powerful these are already, 
If you look at the programs we put in place have made it possible for already hundreds of thousands of Americans to refinance and take advantage of lower interest rates. That's a core part of our program. Now, you're, and you're, you're right that we're also moving quickly to put in place these programs to help prevent foreclosures, allow modifications. And we're making a lot of progress in that area. As a condition for government assistance, uh, banks have to agree to participate in these loan modification programs, and we're going to make sure that they're doing so and that the American people are going to see data on performance on modifications and have a better chance to judge for themselves what's happening on the modification front. Good. I will return to the question about changing interest rates, um, but my time is up. Uh, Congressman Henserling?